Hi everyone, and a big welcome to the Living With SMA podcast. We talk about all things spinal muscular atrophy related, but topics discussed are not exclusively for individuals with SMA, so there should be something here for everyone. We also do things differently. For starters, our charity SMA UK uses different hosts, and everyone involved gets a final say in the creative process of making these episodes. We cut through the jargon, and the content is accessible for everyone. All the stories are individual, and we are committed to sharing as many different perspectives as we can for our listeners. So if you're listening to this and have a burning desire to talk about a particular subject, then please reach out to us on our social media channels, or send us a quick email. And remember, no topic is off the table. If there is something the SMA community wants to talk about, this is the place. We really hope you enjoy the podcast and please do connect with our charity and share your comments online and let us know what you think. From all the team at SMA UK, thank you for listening. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Living With SMA podcast. My name is Ross Lannan and I'm going to be your host for today. Now today's episode is going to be a follow-on from a previous episode we've done where we are looking at the transitioning period um, into schools and today's episode is going to be a focus purely on the transition into secondary school. Now I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to let my guest introduce herself in a second. And I think today's going to be a great episode. I've just got the one guest today. So we're going to be hearing a very personal account and it's going to be uh, really interesting, hopefully, for you to sort of listen and hear all about um, their experience. So Grace, can I hand over to you just to introduce yourself tell us a bit about you and your family please yeah hi I'm Grace I'm Sunny's mum Sunny's got SMA type 3 and transitioned into secondary school in September he's one of four so he's got an older sister who's currently at secondary school and two younger siblings so we're a busy household (laughs) very busy indeed (laughs) So obviously today's podcast is all about talking about that transition into secondary school. So I feel like we should start at the very beginning um, in the sense of like any sort of change in any, but any child or family's life can be incredibly, you know, children are, are incredibly vulnerable, especially at times of change. So this is a really important podcast today and especially going into secondary school when your child is getting a little bit older and more you know, obviously aware of, of things. So I want to talk to you about the the sort of beginning, like you're obviously going from primary to secondary. At what stage do you start thinking about that transition into secondary? Well, we were really led by the Senko team in primary school. So we actually started the transition uh, pretty much 12 months before the sort of moving in September so it's been a really long process really long process and I must admit that Sonny was so so excited to start secondary school he loved primary school but he was so excited to start that next journey so um yeah there was all the emotions you know feeling excited scared but you know predominantly he was really excited to start secondary school so he had a good primary experience to sort of set those foundations yeah. and that routine of school yeah he had to then really, move to- really good supportive school Senko team were fantastic preempted everything really really supportive so it was them that encouraged the you know start the transition really early start meeting some of the teachers and getting to know the grounds of the school um, and really to see what sort of adaptions needs to be put in place for him to start and in terms of school options was you pretty set on I know you mentioned you you know Sonny's got siblings um so was you pretty set already on the school he was going to or was there much process of finding an appropriate yeah, school for him? He's got an older sibling who's one year in front so she had just done her first year there so we knew it was great school um you know academically we did look around and oh wait like we did look around but we did have our heart set on there and obviously Sonny does have an EHC plan so it's kind of find the school that that suits Sonny and they'll make it you know adaptable for Sonny so um he got that the the school that we wanted um 
And yeah, luckily we'd had an older sibling that we kind of sussed it out before having to kind of venture everywhere else. But yeah, it was a perfect school for him. So Grace, obviously you said the process of transitioning into secondary was started early and it was a lot of meetings and, and things like that. How did you come to sort of identify the the Senko lead and make those initial connections? So again, we were led by the Senko team in primary school. However, we do have a good occupational therapist, a really hands-on occupational therapist. So obviously she, it's something she does quite sort of regularly. So we were, were led by them. We did have a lot of meetings. So they went to the school, even without me being there. They must have done 20 plus visits before actually starting in September um, to identify what needs to be done in order for Sunny to start in September and, you know, as independent as possible. Um, that included toilet works, like changing the toilet over to an electric toilet, servicing all the lifts, make sure there was electric doors. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, just general making sure that the... The electric doors are working, the ramps and everything were in place. So um, those works were due to be done over the summer holidays, ready for when he starts in September. Brilliant. Let's see. Okay. And are these all the things that are included in, you mentioned already, the, the EHCP, the Education Healthcare Plan? I imagine your, your plan was incredibly detailed and in your head you thought, we're set up and ready to go yeah so um obviously we went in saw the same secondary school she said don't worry september we've got the whole of the summer holidays to to get all the works done so it doesn't interfere with other children around you know they've got clear space obviously it was all documented for the hc plan um along with the council as well so everything was set to go throughout the summer holidays ready for when sunny started september so you know the day was fast looming and he went in and nothing was done Wow. Okay. So talk me through that process of, you know, you, you, you signed off for summer, you thought, great, this is the, the start of the new adventure. You go back that first day and then you realize nothing is in place here. Talk me through what is going through your head at that stage. My heart dropped. I actually got a call from Sunny first day. Nerves were obviously high anyways, going to, to new school amongst hundreds of children in his year class that he's never met before because obviously when you go to secondary school it's times by six so instead of just two classes of year six for example you've got six seven classes of year seven so lots of children he didn't know so he was anxious but so so excited and I got a call about half an hour in um, from Sunny in tears saying nothing's done he can't go to the toilet my heart just sunk so obviously we'd had no communication from the school to say nothing had been done. Um, unfortunately, over the summer holidays, the Senko team, the, the person who was the head of Senko of the school had left and they hadn't passed over or handed over to a new member of staff because they hadn't didn't have one in place for September. So she left and then nothing was done. So he turned up to the school where he couldn't go to the toilet. None of the doors were working. The hoists hadn't been serviced. He was terrified and we were terrified for him. It was just... It was shocking. It was shocking. So obviously we got him home um, and, and it's not great because the first day you don't want to be known as the new boy two, three days you know, later. You're all in the same boat, aren't you, with all the other children. So um, he was devastated. He really was devastated and scared. So um, obviously we brought him home and set up a meeting for the next day. And honestly, it's been ongoing for, I think we got the, we actually got the toilet done in... February and he starts in September. Yeah. yeah. This is the problem, isn't it? These people don't often realize that this is why you start the process so much earlier because these are not quick fixes. These are not things that can just be altered within a couple of days. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are there are processes and these things take time and, and money. So this is why you start early, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and from our point of view, we thought we did it did do it early enough. I'm not saying this happens to everyone because obviously, normally speaking, the Senko team don't change over. And had they not, would it be done? I would like to say yes, but you know, it wasn't, and it was it was horrifying. It was it was it was awful because unfortunately, you know, we didn't want Sunny move, you know, leaving out school and not doing his schoolwork. So we still had to continue sending him in uh, to school, and then every time we needed the toilet, we had to get a taxi to go pick him up, bring him home for the toilet. Well, 
And what, what impact has that had? Obviously, on you as a parent, you're essentially having to be like on call 24 7. It was um, exhausting. It really was exhausting. Obviously, I've got three other siblings, so I was worried that he's going to need the toilet that, uh, when I was picking up the other children from school or, you know, I, I'm a housewife, so I do all the bits and stuff at home. But it was it was just being on call. I felt like we couldn't do anything. It was a bit like being a prisoner in your own home. You're like, you're waiting for a call because you know he needs the toilet at least a couple of times a day. Um, it was it just impacted us all. We were all exhausted. You know, I was in and out of meetings pretty much two or three times a week. The occupational therapist was the same. Um, it was it was just nonstop. We just it was just constant. It was constant. And but, but also you're trying to as a, as a parent stay positive for Sunny that you know this is going to be a good school. This is going to be perfect. You're going to meet friends and, and all the other side of it. Um, so yeah, it was it was really tough, and we had to keep trying to put a brave face on for Sunny, saying, "Oh, okay, don't worry about it. We'll sort it. It's not a problem." In the meantime, we're there sending a hundred emails and ringing up the council and chasing up people for quotes, and you know, because unfortunately, all the quotes, the actual just initial bit hadn't been done, so it wasn't just a case of someone's ready to go in and do the job. It was they needed to have three quotes from different places and the specifics and and all that sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, it, it was really, really tough, really tough. Yeah, I imagine that sort of emotional drain, that sort of, you know, from a, a mental health and, and just general well-being, that, that must be incredibly hard over a long period of time as well because, like you said, it's taken all this time to yeah to get this in place. And it, it kind of drew Sonny's excitement away as well because when he was getting up, he was anxious going to school, going like, what if I need the toilet, like, Sorry, and as much as we tried to kind of not show him that that we were kind of worried and stuff, he was like, "I'm so sorry, Mum." I was like, "It's you do not need to apologise. This is not this is not you." Um, so it just added so much more, which could have been such a lovely transition, exciting time for going into that next stage of life. It really was one of the toughest times that we've we've gone through over his whole educational years. Yeah, because I was going to say, obviously, the the impact of you as a parent and as a family must have been huge but also you have to consider like the impact on Sonny as well it's it's stressful enough adapting to change in a new school and having to go into education and and focus on learning but also when you have a disability you've got even more to think about and worry about isn't it the anxiety absolutely absolutely luckily you know Sonny is quite outgoing and he'd already said like I know mum people are going to look at me and people are going to have questions and I'm really open I'm really open to that and we did find again that was a struggle with staff um you know not having the knowledge so Sunny came up with a really good idea saying how about I do a presentation mum that explains my condition but also what I can and can't do so when they say put your hands up for this he can't put his hand up without sort of struggling at times. So he used a ruler. So all these sort of little things, he said he did this presentation that they sent to the whole of the staff team at the school so that if they saw him in a hallway and he was sort of leaning to one side, that they could potentially just sort of lift him back up. Or if he, you know, there's a question in class, like put your hand up if you need this or that, that, you know, they would give him a ruler or something to use. So he was really proactive and trying to help himself as well um, and very, very open to all the new people that were asking questions and things. So, you know, that side, he's been, like, really, really strong, really strong. We're super proud of him. He's dealt with it as best as he can and, uh, you know, he's done fantastic. All of his new friends now are people that he's met since he's moved to school. He's, his other friends he sort of waves to. Cool. Yeah, he's uh, – you can always see – you can always hear Sonny before you can see him. <laughs> love that <laughs> and do you do you feel like i mean that that story in itself is is what what a guy you know to to take that initiative himself to say you know i'm gonna teach them myself how it should be done um do you think that this is almost like forced his hand or like encouraged him to be more independent it's almost like actually i'm gonna thought this out myself you know yeah I mean we've we've been trying to for years to kind of get him to to be more independent and do the things that he can because obviously when you're at primary school it's a lot smaller and it's more compact so you have more staff 
um, you only have sort of one teacher that teaches you the curriculum. So at primary, it wouldn't be a case of him asking for his lunchbox or his coat. It was just kind of done for him. Whereas when you go to secondary school, you don't have that constant person or teacher knowing you in, inside and out that he has to ask for things. He has got to think for himself. So it has been, it has made him grow up. It's, it really, really has, but for the better. So, yeah. you know, sometimes these things are sent to try us, aren't they? And I think Sonny's coped really well considering. And yeah, I mean, I'm seeing him turn into a, you know, from a boy to, to a young man. <laughs> yeah. And do you think as well, like, obviously, when you're in the moment at the time, it's incredibly stressful. But obviously, thank God you sort of, come saw a bit of light at the end of the tunnel now and you're coming out the other end where things are a little bit more positive and settled yeah but it's easier to look back on it and think you know how did we we, we've done that? this yeah yeah made but also do you think this is almost sort of given him a realization of what life with a disability could be like because you know even as adults we're all we you know life is not as much as you don't want to say, you know, life is not easy for, for anybody. But when you have a disability, it is a const- it does seem like a constant battle. It is, yeah. I mean, even when we go out for weekends, we have to pre-know where we're going so we know that they've got the changing places, toilets, or that the restaurant we're going to has got a ramp and things. But it absolutely has opened his eyes to, you know, I need to kind of, you know, preempt or or plan things really in advance because it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy. And there are always, always going to be challenges. You know, he wants to walk to school, but we've done the route on three or four occasions, but there isn't any dropped curbs. So there isn't anywhere for him to be able to travel to school driving with his friends mm-hmm. that is safe for him to do so without having to drive on the road for a bit. So we've had to go on this occasion. We can't, but as you get older and, you, you know, you get your friends around locally, then you can start doing it. But it's absolutely opened his eyes to, you know, the certain hurdles he may have to get over it in the future. Yeah. Like even from my own personal experience, um, you know, the whole going to secondary school, you think you're, you know, you want to be as independent as you can and you don't want, you know, mum or dad there or anything and you yeah. want to try and be independent. And in regards to the whole walking to and from school with your friends, I went through the exact same thing. I was adamant I wanted to because my house was maybe like a 10, 15 minute walk from the school. And I was like, no, I want to go in my wheelchair with my friends. Um, and there was this one piece of road that it was, it was it was on a bit of a slant. And every time I'd go round the corner in my wheelchair, it was just, it was too sharp of a corner that I would sort of slip out into the road a little bit. And it was, yeah. it was dangerous. Yeah. Um, and we spoke and we spoke to our local council saying, please, is there anything we can do? It's not safe. Um, is there anything we can do? And they were adamant, no, 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 we can't. We're not going to be altering the road. And then we managed to persuade one councillor in the end to actually just come out instead of just speaking on the phone. Yeah, and, come and, and have uh, a look. Actually come out and have a look and experience it for yourself. And I, I will never forget this. My mum said, I want you to sit in the wheelchair and I want you to do that piece of road and see how you would feel yeah. experiencing it. So my mum got me out of the chair and she made this counsellor sit in my wheelchair yeah. and go down the road. He skid straight out into the road and they changed it within however long it took. But they, they agreed to it because sometimes it takes somebody else to actually stand in those shoes to understand. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Well, your mum's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> So I know, obviously, the, the, the process of, of getting to this stage was, was very difficult. And I don't want to dwell too much on the negativity, but yeah. it's also really important that people hear this side of the story because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It, this no. is the reality, unfortunately. Um, am I right in thinking that you had to not only, obviously, speak to the school to get these changes put in place, but you had to seek external support from, like, your MP and other OTs and things like that yeah absolutely so um you know we had the meetings with school and then we were sat down or I was sat down in a room and told I just don't think that this school is going to be suitable for Sunny um and I said 
based on what? Because academically, Sonny was one of the top 10 students with his grades. So I said, based on what, are you telling me that the reason why he's not right for this school is because you can't, you won't do the adaptions? And they were kind of cornered because they knew full well that, that you know, they have to do the adaptions. So I did. I went to my local MP. Um, I felt like we were being discriminated against solely on Sonny's physical needs. Um, and it was literally the next day that I got a chance to then meet with the headmaster who'd received an email from my local MP and the local council saying that the works need to be done within a certain time frame and they were done within four days. And that had taken us wow. four and a half months to get to that stage. Four and a half months of picking him up from school, taking him to the toilet, taking him back to school. You know, just being on the ends of the phone, really, um, the numerous appointments. So we did have to go that step further, which we shouldn't have done. And we did get full apologies from the school. I think, really, they buried their head in the sand and thought it was a lot harder than what it was. But actually, when they come to look at it, it it's helped with toileting and, and a few bits throughout the day. It really isn't. It isn't that difficult. Once you know, I just think it's lack of knowledge um, across the board, really. And as much support we got from the occupational therapist, not everyone's got an occupational therapist that can do appointments two, three times yeah. a week every week. There's there's hundreds of children around that need their help. So I just had to kind of pull from every angle I possibly could. Excuse me. And um, yeah. yeah, so we did. We got there. And now Sunny has got full one-to-one support at school. Um, who does all the hoisting because again that was another issue that no one knew how to work the hoists or no one had done a manual handling course uh, the staff w- were scared of the equipment they looked at it and went wow no I'm not, not doing that but actually once all the training had done and the staff had come in to train they went oh I didn't realise it's that simple um, I just think it's it's lack of, lack of knowledge across the board um, and Sonny was very, you know, again, he, he speaks. He will tell them, this is how you do it. I'll show you how to do it. Um, so he takes that kind of pressure away, if you like, because he does it all the time at home. Um, I was terrified when I first started using a hoist. I was like, oh, my God, what is that? I'm terrified something's going to go wrong. But actually, it's, it's so, so simple once you've seen it and done it a couple of times. It's second nature. I could do it with my eyes closed and hell. But, um, yeah, I just think it's a little bit daunting at first, but, you know, you get there and, and now he has a fantastic one-to-one support and he's very much made it clear he do, does not want someone with him the whole time. He wants to be independent. He wants to be naughty in class or whisper when he's not supposed Brilliant. to. All those sort of things any teenage boy would. So she comes in, sets him up for, at the start of class and then at the end of class and then he'll go off and do his thing and she'll do it for the next lesson. So it works really, really well. And she's going to be going on, hopefully, um, school trips as well. So, um, Definitely. yeah, so w- I think we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. It's just not yeah. giving up and and knowing that you have got the support of like you guys or speaking to you guys um, who really helped with me when I just needed to go. Rah! Um, yeah, I spoke to the team and they were just like, right, you know, take a breath and, and write it down and speak to me. Sometimes just lend it out, just majorly helps you yeah. kind of go right I've, I've vented now instead of to the family who are all in the same boat worrying you vented to someone else and you feel 10 times better and go yeah. well, clear head let's start again so um yeah definitely and it's such it's like a crucial time in mm. his life you know he's in year seven he's you know he's 12 years old he, he, you've got all these other factors to consider you know it's, it's puberty it's it's yeah. you're growing up and yeah I, i'm just I'm so glad that you're, you're seeing that light at the end of the tunnel now because, yeah, nobody should have to experience what you guys have as a family. So it's just nice to hear that things are moving forward in a positive way yeah. eventually. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think it's made us all stronger. It's made Sonny definitely wiser. He's got a great friendship group now. You know, he, he's striving. He's doing fantastic academically. And he's getting the support for for the bits that he needs like the physical side of things he's getting support for so now he's just like he was poorly yesterday he was poorly yesterday he was like I really don't feel well it's like okay well look let's get some medication let's get back up to bed he's like no as long as I've got my neurofin I'm going in school I was like okay yeah. <laughs> so yeah he's, he, wow. he loves it he, loves, he really does love it and he's got like I say really good support network now mm-hmm. so um 
just every day is different, yeah. isn't it? You just take each day as it comes. But he's looking yeah. forward to it. He's doing well, and that's all we can ask, really. Absolutely. And are, are there any sort of concerns that you have still in regards to, like, if he's in year seven now, as he progresses through secondary school, have yeah, you got any so concerns over the coming? up to a new site when he's in year nine. So already I'm having meetings with the school now saying, right, we need that you've done up at the other side. So they are very aware there is no excuses. Uh, there's no change over staff. It's documented. It's actually put into the EHC plan now as well that it needs to be ready for September to 2025. So um, already they are getting building work builders come around getting quotes so we are preempting it well in advance um i guess we've got exams coming up but that's going to be just normal anxieties i suppose we have spoken to um the staff already and they've said that potentially he could get a little bit of extra time because he's a little bit slow in, in the writing um they have also supplied a laptop so that he's able to contact his one-to-one -one throughout lessons so I, I'm I'm really confident in his future. He's very he's very strong minded. Um, we are going through the, the you know the tough teenage years at the moment, so he's testing his boundaries a hell of a lot. And I think we get it more at home than we do at school because they said, "Oh, he's such a polite, beautiful boy." And I'm like, "You want to see when he's on one at home?" Yes, so, um, yeah, no, I'm I'm positive. I, I'm positive. He's he's he does enjoy some time out, like so, certain PE lessons that he, that he's not able to do, like they do wall climbing and stuff. They set up a um, little Senko area where they've got like farm anim animals and stuff in. So he's uh, going in to do that in the animal sanctuary to help birds. And he's just been invited for on Monday to go and interview for a Senko for the whole of the art area. They're looking to employ someone. So they want to be on the student panel for the Senko to, to interview them. So he was like, my transition was terrible. What are you going to do That's to stop this from happening to anyone else? So he's going to be quite brutal. So he's sticking up. He'll be there and he'll be saying his part. So, um, yeah, yeah. Use the experience as a positive and use it going forward. I love that. Sonny from Prime Minister, that's what Absolutely. I say. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, as a sort of final question now, um, I want to ask you, what advice would you give to other families and parents out there that are at the early stages now of, of starting their transition into secondary school? What advice could you give? Take a deep breath. <laughs> uh, time, patience, and just, yeah, have a good relationship with your occupational therapist because they really will guide you. Um, and uh, make as many appointments as you can so they get to know Sunny and the surrounding of the school is is never going to be easy it wasn't primary school going into secondary it's another massive thing is just talk be open and yeah lean on lean on people really it just because it is it's so stressful it's it was such a worried anxious time um but yeah best relationship you can get with senko and stay in touch and like, sometimes i've found that you'll send messages and you don't get a reply you send a message again and again and again and you will eventually be heard brilliant stuff uh, i know it's an incredibly personal story so just want to say thank you for sort of opening up and sharing your yours and sunny's story today because i'm sure there are many people out there that can relate mm. and sympathize and everything as well so thank you for for coming on grace oh you're welcome thank you for having me and we just want to remind you all as well uh, we have some resources on the sma uk website if you need any help or signposting to other organizations as well that can help you with the transition into school please don't hesitate in getting in contact with us like i said you can visit the sma uk website or if you'd like to email us uh, we will leave the email address in the uh, description of this video so there we have it thank you for listening uh, to today's episode and we will be back with another episode very soon take care bye You've been listening to the Living With SMA podcast. We hope you can join us again next time. But in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can find out more on our website at smauk.org.uk.